Another cool way to uh, render normal maps in view is to use the rock objects themselves uh, to add geometry and uh, render those out uh, to create a more interesting looking normal. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the uh, top camera and go ahead and load in uh, one of the rocks. And go ahead and go to the rough rocks and we can use uh, one of the boulder type rocks. It's got uh, some nice cracks in it. And those work really well. Go ahead and scale that up. And I'm just going to move the camera out a bit and zoom in just a little. Go ahead and set up in the render options to render it square. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in another rock. And we can use uh, an ecosystem of rocks too uh, if you wanted uh, more complexity. Uh, but basically, just, we just want to fill it in uh, with different rocks, just kind of fill in the render area. And we could also just clone and rotate some of the rocks uh, too. So I can go ahead and control D to duplicate or duplicate the object, just rotate that around. And duplicate it again. You could load another one in. Uh, you could use different types. Uh, change the sizes. And after you have the render area uh, filled in, uh, what you can do is, just to make the render quicker, since we don't need to render out the bump map in order to generate the normal map, uh, is we could just reset the material on all the objects. Uh, we could also group it together, and uh, if we want to add additional rocks um, as an ecosystem, we could uh, fill in uh, different areas with smaller rocks. Uh, first, let's just go ahead and render this out as it is. Let's go ahead and do uh, 600 by 600. Enable the multi-pass. Make sure that the XYZ normal is turned on. And here's our render. And we can go ahead and take a look at the multi-pass. The XYZ normal. And now we have another normal map we could use. Uh, to apply to uh, rocks or terrains. Uh, we could also use this technique in order to create uh, basically a, a companion map or a diffusion map to apply or mix with uh, any other material when using the normal. Uh, and the best would be to create an ambient occlusion render set our light balance all the way to ambient. Uh, make sure the range is set up at a good size. So our rocks are around and this rock is 12 to 10 meters or so and our range is set to 20 meters. Might not need it that high. Well, we could bring it down to say 10 meters or maybe even 6 meters should be good. So we could also use this color map, save it out. Uh, we would need to make a few modifications, really kind of uh, brightening it up and just pulling out uh, the smaller elements. Uh, also, within the multipass, we should have uh, it looks like the radiosity is not going to give us uh, what we need. Uh, it just looks like there's a little bit of a display error showing up here. And it looks like that's kind of messed up at the moment for this version. I'm 
not quite sure why that is. Um, but another thing we could do to render this out, because uh, it is being influenced by the spectral lighting, uh, we could switch it over to the environment mapping and uh, increase the exposure uh, up to one. And we don't need to use an environment map. And then set the overall sky color to be uh, white. We could even set the ambient light color um, a little differently. But this will give us a, a better diffuse map, uh, more of a black and white, uh, something that we could multiply against uh, the color uh, as part of a material. Uh, and the main thing to keep in mind uh, when you're creating a seamless map out of the render uh, is that you're also going to have to have a seamless uh, image for the ambient occlusion render uh, as well. Uh, another technique uh, for the ambient occlusion uh, is because we only have the area uh, within the render really filled in. Um, what can happen is we're not going to have an influence of objects around the outer edge, uh, which could make it more difficult to uh, set up a seamless texture. Uh, so what we could do is just add objects around the outer edge uh, in order to take that into consideration for the ambient occlusion. It doesn't have to be uh, a complex object. I'm just going to add, we'll do spheres. And reset the material so that it matches the rock material. And then we can just copy and paste or uh, duplicate those around the edges. Uh, another thing you could do if you've never used the uh, subdivide and extrapolate options is you can copy and paste the object. We can move it over and then under edit we could uh, repeat operation subdivide, enter in a number, say 3, and then it'll create uh, duplicates within the copied objects. Uh, you could also expand upon it the other way if we were to set it right next to each other we could continue onward. Uh, by using the extrapolate option. So we should notice a difference uh, with the ambient occlusion when rendering now because it'll take into account those outer objects. So if we take a look at the difference now, we can see uh, it's very light on the edges uh, in the previous render. In the new render, we now have it a lot darker around the edges, showing that we would have more objects uh, sort of surrounding it. It does make it uh, more realistic uh, and more equal to what's in the center. That should make it a lot easier to tile or make seamless. And if you want to expand the radius, you could also Go into the atmosphere editor and set a higher range. We could set that up to uh, 20 or 30 to calculate a much larger area for uh, the gradient or fall off. Uh, so taking a look at the difference between the 6 meters and the new value, uh, we can see that the rocks are uh, darkening around the edges a lot more, which should help the normal map um, and the color sort of mix together better. Uh, if you want to improve the quality, uh, we could also go into the atmosphere editor and increase the quality boost up to say 1. And it's going to take longer to render, but it'll give you a nicer map. And it'll also account for smaller uh, polygons and uh, tighter bits of geometry. Uh, so if we take a look at the difference with the quality boost, really what we're doing is filling in those cracks a lot more. So 
the quality boost of zero. We've got a lot of gaps uh, that show up throughout the rocks. And then increasing the quality boost will uh, make a filled in crack so it looks a lot better. Uh, also, if you want to just avoid all um, post color corrections on that color map, what we could do is go into the atmosphere editor and take the ambient light color, set it to black, and take the sky dome lighting gain and increase that all the way up to one. And that should give us something uh, that we really don't have to modify uh, the coloration or the contrast or anything of. And that way we can just darken uh, a color uh, with the ambient occlusion. Uh, the pre-pass should look basically the same as uh, the overlapping color render uh, in this case. Uh, now if I open up the uh, post-processing for the render, I'm going to turn off the natural film response and then we can see that a lot better. So now we can just adjust the exposure in order to get uh, the diffusion map that we want. Uh, so we're now going to take uh, that normal uh, just generated and apply it uh, to this rock and mix together the color with that AO that was rendered, uh, the ambient occlusion. Uh, if you want to start with this scene, it's uh, called rock group underscore texture. And what I want to do is uh, just go into the function and delete the bump mapping. And we're going to add in a texture map. And I'm just going to drag in the normal. Add an output of normal mapping. Add a math node vector operation RGB to normal. And I'm going to set my mapping mode object parametric. So now we have uh, just the normal map uh, showing up. Go ahead and take a look at it with just the normal. And that does give a nice interesting uh, texture on it, an interesting bump. Uh, so now we're going to go into uh, the color function. And we do want to make sure that the color uh, production, the function scale, is set to 1 all the way across. And what we're going to do is uh, select the texture map. We can copy and paste it. And that way, all of the settings are carried over. I'm going to also make sure that the interpolation type is set to bilinear for the normal map. And then I'm going to drag in uh, my AO uh, map for uh, this new texture map. And we're going to go to the color link, and we're going to add in a combiner node, a blender, set it to multiply, and connect it to that texture map. And we can multiply it by maybe uh, all the way up to 1 if you want uh, that full darkness in it. Otherwise, you can go maybe just a little bit below, maybe 0.8 uh, will also work uh, pretty well. And as you can see, it works a, a, a lot better uh, with the color to combine the ambient occlusion uh, render along with the normal map. It does give it a lot more depth. And it certainly renders quicker than uh, regular bump mapping. Uh, you could also tie that into the highlight if you want, uh, doing the same thing, uh, just multiplying uh, to reduce the highlight value. Uh, one thing I like to do rather than modifying the highlight is to modify the contrast. Now, typically the contrast uh, with the slider, uh, and that's in the effects tab, uh, zero is as low as you can go, but if we extract the contrast, we can actually go uh, a lot further down. Uh, negative two, 
Uh, we can go negative 5. We could really go pretty far and uh, darken that up. Uh, what I want to do is use the texture map uh, that we've got for the color. I'm going to add in uh, a filter node, set it to map, and connect it uh, to the grayscale output of this texture map. I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Uh, so we have negative 1 to 1, which I actually want to be uh, the output going to negative 2 from negative 1. And connect that to the contrast. And then we can clip the outer range values, although we probably won't need to. Uh, so this will add even more depth uh, to the highlight. If you take a look at the difference, it's uh, not drastic, but it does uh, conform to that image map a lot more. Uh, so we could even increase that uh, further. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and just save this rock texture mapped so you can have a starting point and also the finished product. And I'll go ahead and incorporate the texture maps. If we go back into that material, uh, I'm going to go to that filter node and we'll go ahead and set the black portion to say negative 4 and still stick with negative 1 for the high point. Let's now add even, even more depth, as so you can see the difference. And the contrast does work uh, with the highlight, so we'll add the highlight on top of it, and then the contrast will adjust the overall highlight value uh, as another way of uh, using it separately from uh, the highlight uh, function and the highlight up output. It's kind of a neat way to uh, mix all of those together uh, by using the ambient occlusion.